you know, Limbaugh takes every opportunity he can to call uh, Bill Clinton a draft dodger. Uh, <clears throat> so you might wonder where exactly in Nam uh, <laughs> Limbaugh served. <laughs> Uh, the steaming rice patties of the Delta? <laughs> or was he a Marine dug in at Quezon? Special forces, perhaps, crossing the DMZ on a search and destroy with Born to Kill tattooed on his biceps? <laughs> or maybe he stayed in Saigon and used that talent on loan from God to entertain the boys in the field. That's it. Of course, Robin Williams' Good Morning Vietnam character must have been based on Rush. <laughs> Not quite. When questioned about his draft history in 1992, Limbaugh responded, I had student deferments in college, and upon taking a physical, was discovered to have a physical uh, by virtue of what the military says. I didn't even know it existed. A physical deferment, and then the lottery system when they chose your lot by birth, your birth date, and mine was high. Sounds like they discovered some debilitating injury at the draft physical, doesn't it? No. Limbaugh, who has said about the draft, I made no effort to evade it or avoid it, never took a draft physical. Instead, records show that Limbaugh preempted a physical by providing his draft board with information of some disqualifying condition. Limbaugh's story has changed several times. According to Limbaugh, the physical deferment was for either a football knee from high school or a pelinoidal cyst. A pelinoidal cyst is a congenital incomplete closure of the neural groove at the base of the spinal cord in which excess tissue and hair may collect, causing discomfort and discharge. As disgusting as this sounds, there is no evidence that Limbaugh's uh, cyst contributed to the breakup of his two marriages. <laughs> there is, however, no, also no evidence of a football injury. It's funny how many hawkish Republicans didn't go. Phil Graham had student and teaching deferments. George Will had student deferments. Clarence Thomas was 4F. So was Pat Buchanan, who had a bad knee. He spent the war writing speeches for Nixon. Interestingly, he is now an avid jogger. Uh, regularly, I understand. After his Murphy Brown speech, Dan Quayle took a lot of unfair hits, especially from Hollywood. Quayle wasn't attacking single parents. He was talking about the importance of fathers. For example, Quayle's father found his son a slot in the Indiana National Guard, and the boy didn't have to go to Nam. Newt Gingrich didn't go, but sometimes he regrets it. He said that by uh, avoiding Vietnam, he, quote, missed something. A large part of me thinks I should have gone over. I wonder if Bob Carey ever thinks... I'm missing something, a large part of me, this one, Operation Chicken Hawk, Central Highlands, South Vietnam, August 1969, shit, murmured Gingrich, wiping the sweat from his brow, are we in trouble, Quail whispered, Quail was new meat, this was his first night ambush, and he was shaken, you want to know what that smell was, Gingrich said with disgust as they trudged down the jungle trail, it's shit. Limbaugh shits his pants whenever he's scared. <laughs> That's why no one wants to be in a hole with Limbaugh. <laughs> it's my polenoidal cyst, came the voice in the air. It's a congenital incomplete closure of the neural groove at the base of my spinal cord in which excess tissue and hair may collect, causing discomfort and discharge. I shouldn't be here. <laughs> Bullshit, shouted Buchanan. You've dropped a load in your shorts and it stinks. It's my polenoidal cyst, huffed Limbaugh as he struggled to keep up. Fuck your polenoidal cyst, I'm sick of hearing about it. Came the thick southern drawl. Fuck you, Graham. The corpulent radio operator shot back. Eat me, fatso. Now they're all yelling at Limbaugh. Gingrich, Graham, Thomas, Buchanan, all but Quayle, who was too new and too scared to take side. And Will. It was too high on acid. <laughs> That's why Will was the one they called Stoner. <laughs> Shut up, you meatheads. Lieutenant North was pissed. <laughs> You're gonna get us killed. North couldn't believe he was out with this bunch of sorry-ass losers. He was platoon leader. Normally a buck sergeant would be taking a squad out on an ambush. But this squad was giving his whole platoon a bad rep. Word had spread up and down three corps. North had a squad of chicken shits who wouldn't fight. Well, tonight that would change. North knew that sounds carried at night. Fortunately, they were only a few hundred meters from base camp. The reconnaissance team had reported Boku NVA movement a few clicks north, and the chicken shit squad was headed out to surprise a few dinks. North was still sizing them up. Knowing who you could rely on could save your life. Not knowing could get you killed. Will? 
you take point. Go ask Alice. <laughs> Private Grimm. <laughs> what? <laughs> North hoped he'd heard the man wrong. When she's ten feet tall. <laughs> he hadn't. What are you talking about, soldier? One pill makes you larger. <laughs> One pill makes you small, we'll explain. <laughs> Gingrich, what's wrong with Will? First day in Am, Stoner saw a buddy get greased. A guy named Bill Bennett. Got it right in the eye. Stoner tried to plug the hole, came up holding a handful of goop that used to be Bennett's brain. It was pretty grotesque. Bizarre and grotesque, to be honest. Stoner hasn't been the same since. And the ones that Mother give you don't do anything at all. Will giggled. <laughs> North just shook his head. Too late to send Will back. Limbaugh, take Will. From now on, you two are buddies. Limbaugh nodded. He didn't mind. Will was the only one who didn't complain when he dropped the load. <laughs> North turned to Thomas. Clarence, you take point. Why? Thomas shot back indignantly. Because I'm black? <laughs> North knew he couldn't tolerate insubordination. But racial tensions had been high within the platoon. Okay, Buchanan, you got point. But my knee! Buchanan wins to make his point. Sometimes it goes out and I scream. You don't want the point, man, giving away our position. Graham rolled his eyes. How many times had they heard about Buchanan's knee? Buchanan? My mama told me there are two kinds of people. Graham scrunched his face like a bulldog. The kind that pulls the wagon and the kind that rides in the wagon. It's time you got out of the wagon. Then you take point, the Irishman shot back. I took it last time, drawled the Texan. Bullshit, I took it last time. No, I did. Rick Ingrich, Limbaugh and Graham are at each other now. North just wanted to stop. All right, I'll take point. Now let's move. North started forward, taking the point position about 20 meters in front of his man. As he worked his way down the moonlit trail, North began to get a bad feeling. He had led a lot of men into battle. He had seen fear before, but not like this. And North knew one thing. Fear at night is a killer. The trail led to a steep embankment. North clutched the M16 close to his chest and slid down feet first on his butt. It was a bumpy ride, but North didn't mind. In fact, he kind of liked it. <laughs> he just wondered if his men could navigate it. Especially Limbaugh. He's so fat and smelly. But... <laughs> he turned and waited. And waited. Where are they? <clears throat> By the time North caught up with the squad, they were just 50 meters from the base camp perimeter. <laughs> we got lost, shrugged Limbaugh. The only rational thing to do was turn back, Kingrich explained. Graham nodded. Get late, sir. Maybe we should just pack it up and chalk this one up to bad luck. <laughs> the others agreed. Will was the last to speak. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. <laughs> North planted a pair of claymores in the high grass. That made ten in the kill zone. He ran back to the trees where his men were waiting. Cowering, really. They had put in their ambush along a stream about three clicks west of the base. North gave two clackers to Quail and pointed to the arm on the firing device. Whispered, you push this town, it sends a current to the blasting cap that detonates the mine. Huh? <laughs> North couldn't tell if the boy was stupid or just scared stupid. He did know this. Quail had the look of a deer caught in the headlights. <laughs> Never mind. North gave the clackers to Gingrich and hoped for the best. It's going to be a long night, Ben. You want to catch some Z's? Work it out with your buddy. Limbaugh smiled through his fear. He knew Will was too wired to sleep. The rotund radio operator just piled off both their sea rations and was getting drowsy. So he leaned against the radio set and drifted off. In the dark and silence now, each man sat alone with his thoughts and his dread. My God, thought Quail, I'm so scared. I should have listened to Dad and taken that place in the National Guard. But no, I was too worried about my political future. I didn't want to look like some rich coward in the year 2004 when I'd be mature enough to run for national political office. <laughs> God, I'm a fool. Thomas used the moonlight to write his girl. Dear Honey Bunch, sometimes this war frightens me to the depth of my very soul, but I promise you I'll make it out of here alive, sugar, so I can come home into your embrace and gaze into your loving eyes. Love, Clarence. P.S. Send more pornography. <laughs> Ten meters away, Graham gazed up at the stars. He never believed he could kill a man, and so far he hadn't. 
but women and children were another story. <laughs> he thought back to the village and how he'd lost control. Funny what fear will do. Gingrich cursed North under his breath. Four more days and his tour would be over. Then he'd be out of his nightmare. 361 days he'd live with this unbearable, unrelenting, gut-wrenching fear. Fear that had lifted only once. He fought back to the Saigon bar. You number one GI. I fuck you till tomorrow. I suck you all night long, sighed the pouty sex kitten. Could you sit athwart my chest, Gingrich asked excitedly, and make me do terrible things? You number 10 GI. You disgust me. She spit in his face and walked away. Gingrich smiled at the memory. He hadn't found the relief he had, thought, had sought, but at least the humiliation had taken his mind off the fear. <laughs> For the moment, anyway, sleep had erased the fear from PFC to Quail's young mind. His dream took him back to the sun-dappled hills of Indiana, and a raven-haired beauty named Marilyn. His head cradled in her tender arms, they watched the wind ripple through the rows of Hoosier corn. Caressing him lovingly, she nibbled at his ear, then whispered softly, We're never going to get out of this jungle. Well, woke with a start. Someone was still nibbling at his ear. <laughs> I'm so frightened, Quail. Hold me. Hold me tight. Buchanan's strong arms clutched in the air. Quail froze in terror. The next 40 minutes were the longest of his adult life. <laughs> Norse cat-like eyes pierced the dark. He lifted his nose to the air. On a good night, he could smell Charlie from half a click away. Not tonight. Not with Limbaugh, pal. <laughs> then he heard it, a twig snapping in the distance. North ID'd it immediately. Bamboo, 75 yards. They were going to have company. North saw the North saw the scout first. NBA regulars heading right for the kill zone. North's mouth mouth split into a, a grin. He signaled silently to Gingrich, whose hand tightened on the clacker. In a moment, these dinks would be in for the surprise of their lives. Suddenly, the night still night silence was shattered. The Magical Mystery Tour is coming to take you away. <laughs> Fucking Will. North yelled at Stoner to turn off the boombox, but a burst of AK-47 fire did it for him. The boombox had played its last tune, and Stoner had toked his last doobie. <laughs> the jungle erupted in a maelstrom of hot, flying lead. North squeezed his M16, cutting down the scout with a bullet through the head as red tracers from a spewing NBA M60 lit up the night. North turned to see Quail catch one in the throat, leaving a gaping wound that spurted blood onto the terrified Buchanan. Buchanan had just one thought. Play dead. <laughs> when North stopped to reload, he noticed that all the fire was coming from one direction. The squad had not shot one round. The lieutenant caught, caught a glimpse of a panicked Thomas trying to squeeze the trigger. Click off the safety! North cried as he slapped a magazine in while dodging a hail of AK-47 bullets. Too late. Thomas jerked backward, the bullet that took his life ripping through his chest. As North watched 30 NBA regulars charge toward them, he called to Gingrich, The clacker, now! But Gingrich's eyes were wide and his hands frozen with terror. Now, damn it, they're in the kill zone! Again, nothing. North made a mad dash toward Gingrich, AK rounds whizzing by his head and thudding at his feet. A final dive and roll. His hand pushed the handle down. Blam! The ground shook from the explosion and 30 dinks went to their gory deaths. Still, they kept coming. My God, North thought. It's a whole company. Limbaugh, call in the artillery! No response. When North turned to find his radio operator, he couldn't believe his eyes. Limbaugh had pulled Will's corpse over himself, and Stoner's lifeless body heaved in rhythm to the fat man's terror-stricken sobs. For the first time in my life, thought North, I feel ashamed to be an American. At first, Graham had panicked too, but now he knew what to do. I'm not going home in no body bag, he thought. <laughs> Bill Graham's mama didn't raise no fool. <laughs> he clicked off the safety on his M16, lined up his target, and squeezed the trigger. Blam! He stared at the smoking hole in his boot. <laughs> North looked around at his unit. He realized it was just him and the enemy. Thirty yards ahead, two NBAs had set up a machine gun and were spitting out 50 caliber rounds at will. North took one in the leg. His face hardened. He plucked a grenade from his vest, pulled the pin with his teeth, and sent it hurtling through the night air. When the smoke cleared, all that was left was a grisly tangle of flesh and metal. North emptied the clip of, in his machine gun, mowing down a couple dozen dinks in the process. Tossing the spent weapon aside, he decided to take the fight to the enemy. 
He pulled a knife from his belt, placing it between his teeth. Then, with Quail's virgin M16 in one hand and Thomas's in the other, he leapt in charge. Running, dodging, jumping, shooting, knifing, clubbing, and strangling where necessary, he cut a swath of destruction through the astonished ranks of the enemy. Meanwhile, Gingrich had snapped out of his stupor. He grabbed the radio. Limbaugh, tell me how to work this thing. No answer. Just the feeble wimple, whimper of the man sitting in his own excrement. <laughs> Gingrich slapped him across the face. Snap out of it! But Limbaugh couldn't stop crying. Fuck it, I'll do it myself. Where do you keep the, where do you keep the manual? Limbaugh had the hiccups. <laughs> in my back pocket. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh Christ. <laughs> this was going to be unpleasant. <laughs> First light was appearing on the horizon as North slit the throat of an NBA corporal and tossed his body onto the pile. Suddenly his ears pricked up. The sound was unmistakable, the distant thwop, thwop, thwop of a Huey slick. North turned to see the remains of his unit hobbling toward a clearing in the distance. The chopper was almost overhead when North caught up to them. Why the hell are you calling in a medevac? This fire zone is still hot. But sir, we got wounded, shouted Gingrich over the roar of the helicopter. Graham shook his foot demon demonstrably unable to hide his smile. There's still a third of a company of NBA back there, damn it! Now you turn and fight or I'll court-martial every damn one of you! North spun around on his good leg and started back to engage the enemy. Graham turned to Gingrich. You thinking what I'm thinking? Gingrich nodded grimly. Limbaugh choked out a feeble, Uh-huh. <laughs> Buchanan gave a, gave a hearty thumbs up. Crack! North fell to the earth, face down. Blood gushed from the hole that had just opened in his back. He rose to his knees, only to fall again as another slug caught him between the shoulder blades. Son of a bitch, thought Graham. I am capable of killing a man. <laughs> he turned to the others. Nobody saw nothing, right? Nope, not me. Uh-uh. 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 The sun was rising over the battlefield as the Huey lifted the foregrounds to safety. Graham surveyed his wounded foot with a smile. Purple Heart's going to look mighty fine some first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Gingrich and Buchanan exchanged a look. Solemnly, each man drew his knife and plunged it into the other's thigh. <laughs> the pilot turned back to look at them, his nose wrinkling in disgust. Uh-oh, thought Gingrich. He's on to us. Hey, did one of you grunts shit your pants? <laughs> Thank you.